Hey guys, Carl Galler with Carl Galler Builds, home of the Beach Buggy Build. Uh, I am uh, today going to be doing a build uh, out of necessity. Um, we have an Airbnb and uh, we have a really cool uh, vintage um, circa 1940s, mid-century uh, coffee table that is super heavy, which I'm going to try to put a picture somewhere around here. And the thing is really cool. Uh, it's been in my family, or you know, my folks had it when I was, I'm 62 years old. I had it when I was six years old. So anyway, uh, painted it, it's really cool looking, but it's just too damn heavy to move out of the way when you have to use the uh, sofa bed. So I think I'm gonna try a project that I've seen rather than buy it. Uh, I'm gonna try to get crafty and build a kind of a surfboard uh, coffee table, which I think will be pretty cool. So uh, I will show you what I've got uh, to work with and uh, take you along in the journey, see how it works out. So just starting with a two by six by 12, I guess it's like uh, Southern yellow pine or uh, yes, uh, yeah, whatever. Uh, very cheap, it was a $15 stick of wood. Uh, it's 12 feet long, I'm gonna chop it into, I my table needs to be from tip to tip at the longest, uh, 45 inches, and then it'll be somewhere around 36 inches wide. Um, just using basic materials, um, I'm gonna try to get uh, fancy and dowel these together. So the pieces, when I sandwich them together, will kind of lock in and uh, be a, a good joint. So uh, I'm gonna commence to cutting this board, um, and then uh, we'll lay out the table and try to glue stuff together. Whoops. So with that, wish me luck. So I was trying to get, I was going to try to do this whole thing with uh, one um, two by six by twelve, but it's not going to work out. So put the uh, bitch and bug to work. Got another two by twelve. Grass cutters are here, there's always something in them. Okay, so you saw how I pegged them all together. So there's one, two, three, four, 12 pegs. Um, and then I've ratchet strapped it together. 
and there's a slight there's a slight bow here uh, which I don't necessarily object to and this is going to be kind of the general outline that I cut out of it once I have this all glued together I'm going to take I kind of like that profile that I drew and I'm going to mark that out on a piece of cardboard fold it over duplicate it and lay out the whole thing and cut it out stay tuned wish me luck hey guys next morning here um, got the took the straps off of the um, the planks remember we we doweled them all in um, they're nice and solid there's a little bit of a dish and like I said just a little bit of a dish here which I think once I carve out the, the surfboard shape will lend itself to the overall table we're not looking for it to be perfectly flat um, I've laid out some cardboard and I've done a center line so I'm going to trace out like I did yesterday the outline that's pleasing to me <clears throat> and then I'm gonna cut it out and I'll be able to flip this around and make an exact duplicate on both sides so it'll, it will be a symmetrical um, board so I will commence to the um, sketching. Wish me. And that's kind of a basic idea. I mean, clearly it's going to be way shorter than any legitimate surfboard you know, but I want to make it kind of directional where it looks like that's the front and this is the back but I think overall that is a pleasing shape all right what do you think I think that would probably do it I'm gonna cut use a razor knife and cut to the outside of this line out I'll be able to finesse some I don't know artistic aspect to it so it doesn't just look like a an oval table shape here we're gonna be doing a lot of you know shaping and sanding and smoothing but I think for now boy that <laughs> geez that saw cutting it down with that uh, just the skill saw was uh, the way to do it 
So yeah, that's kind of cool. We'll clean that up, smooth it all out, get rid of these chamfers, make it smooth, and uh, make a board out of it. So wish me luck. So that is, uh, there's a lot of meat left on there too. It is actually cutting in a controlled fashion that I'm happy with. I don't know if I should get some wood putty to fill in these things or leave these lines here for character. Not really sure. Maybe drop a comment down below, but um, let me know your thoughts. I mean, I could shoot, I could body fill it and all that stuff, but we're not looking for perfection. We're looking for kind of a rustic, fun conversation piece, uh, coffee table. All right, I'm gonna try to do some time lapse because you don't need to watch uh, an hour of sanding. to give some direction to the board you know we got the front of it so I cut this little fishtail out of here so now it looks a little bit more directional I will uh, grind that down a bit Alrighty, uh, got the, the heavy sanding out of the way, and we've got a really nice kind of stylized uh, surfboard profile. Wipe out. Anyway, um, so I was going to use a router. Uh, to give a nice round over, but I don't own a big, you know, a big enough router bit. I own a little tiny router, cheap little router with a little quarter inch round over bit, but I want to get a nice kind of a bull nose here. So I'm going to try a couple methods. Uh, of course, I can always go back to hacking the shit out of it with, uh, with my, um, uh, with my angle grinder. Um, uh, I've got several of these, but a buddy of mine just recently gave me this old, um, it's really a vintage uh, plane uh, that was his late dad's uh, from back in the 50s and 60s. And uh, I thank my buddy Rob. And let's see if I can uh, try to adjust the blade where it's not going to dig in too hard. And uh, we'll see if I can get a little bit of a round over on these things with this. Otherwise, I have to drop back to plan B. So wish me luck.
that's about it for today. It uh, tomorrow I'll do some uh, some fine sanding on it. It looks pretty cool. And we'll paint it like a vintage uh, with some vintage colors, stripes. So, until tomorrow, uh, wish me luck. Okay, another day. Uh, I'm going to <clears throat> commence the sanding. I'm gonna use this uh, dual orbit sander uh, with uh, 80 grit paper. And uh, I will commence doing that right away. So wish me luck. <laughs>super happy with some of the glue joints uh, as much as I strapped it together so I've used uh, my razor knife and I'm kind of cutting out some of the glue and then I'm going to uh, hit it with some um, wood filler and uh, try to get this kind of smooth I still want to have the grain available to me I'm not sure if I'm going to keep it but um, I don't want to obliterate it with like body filler or anything like that I mean I want it to look like a wood surfboard pretty mixed up already but there was a little bit of juice on the top so I have no idea if this is an acceptable method but I want to get in there real tight with a little bit of flexibility so I'm going to use uh, this razor blade here's where we are today so last night or yesterday I used that plastic wood uh, wood filler and um, I've never really or I haven't used it in a couple decades and it's real volatile it has uh, has like a whatever the solvent is <clears throat> dries really really quickly I mean I could have worked on this last night but um, so I gooped the crap out of it and uh, I'll rough sand this down with my disc just to get the you know all this heavy stuff off and then I will um, well I'll try a couple different methods I don't want to dig it out of the out of the groove so so I'll probably just hit it with my grinding disc and uh, and then hit it with the orbital so wish me luck
I've um, laid down some clear um, polyurethane. I had planned to use the water-based, but I just grabbed this off the shelf. Uh, it's not water-based, it's uh, I guess the oil-based. Uh, and it's really looking nice. Um, I did the underside first, and then the top. And now I'm getting ready to apply um, some color on here, and we've gone with kind of hopefully like a vintage looking uh, red. And uh, well, we'll see what happens. Wish me luck. So this is called a Victorious Red. Uh, I just had a sample made up because that's all I'm going to need, which is kind of cool. It was like five bucks. And um, as you can see, it has like a corally red to it. And the satin. And I think when I'm done, I'm going to be doing the whole thing. Uh, I'm going to be coating it in with polyurethane. That's kind of cool. It's a great color. So uh, we have got uh, two or three coats of the polyurethane and the paint. This is the bottom of the board. I did the top. I'll flip it back over. I'm kind of playing it by ear. I'm not an expert at this by any stretch. Uh, it's looking pretty cool. Um, it's got a nice kind of a vintage look to it. <clears throat> I'll be pulling up this tape. And then we're going to be uh, putting in some, uh, we're going to reverse tape it and paint some accent stripes on there. So, right now I'm at a, pretty much at a standstill. So, until this stuff dries, wish me luck. Alrighty, so I pulled the masking tape off. Uh, this is still tacky. We're going to wait, I guess, I hate being patient. I just like to rush stuff. Um, I'm going to wait for this to dry overnight probably and then I can reverse tape this and get those stripes on there Okay guys, hopefully this is the final push. Uh, I'm gonna do the pinstriping on the board, uh, each side, to whatever, you'll see. Uh, I wanted to show you something really quick. I came up with this, uh, just threw a bunch of shit that I had together to make these little uh, kind of stand things. They're rubber, so I'm gonna put the board on it so it has less contact on this. I, it was kind of chipping the board here and there. I can clean that up, but you know, I wish I had thought of that from the beginning. It'd be less chance of dinging up uh, my work. Anyway, uh, so let's get to getting and uh, wish me luck.
Okay, I've got all the pinstriping done. Now I'm like laying down a top coat of poly to kind of seal everything in. I'm hoping it doesn't negatively react with my pinstriping because it is an oil base. Too lazy. I was I applied the oil base on th these parts before I realized it was oil base, and now I'm afraid to switch water base. So we shall see. I hope it doesn't eat the tape or do something weird, the solvents in the, in the oil base. I hate to have to start all this shit over again. Okay. Right, see. liking the way it's looking. Not perfect by any stretch, but I like it. Alrighty. Well now to the fun part, <clears throat> to add the legs. So I got these legs from Amazon, four of them, and they are hair, hairpin legs but they are folding. So in order to stow this thing away to use the sofa bed in the Airbnb, all they gotta do is squeeze it and it pops these legs out of the way. So I wanna try to figure out the best way arrangement for these guys. And I'm gonna try to arrange them in such a way that they uh, fold, fold down and not interfere with one another. So, this is the folded stance. That would be freaking awesome. So the idea for this little guy was something that was light, that could be moved easily out of the way, the legs would fold up, it can be leaned against the wall when you use the sofa bed, something that looks kind of cool for a beachy place. And you know, all in all, I'm pretty happy with it. Mm-hmm. 
So, I guess that's an episode. Um, and uh, I think we accomplished what we set out to accomplish. Hope you enjoyed this uh, this episode. And uh, if you did, please give it a thumbs up, a like, share it. Please subscribe. I'd love to hear some comments uh, on the build. Always answer. I try to answer 100% of my comments. Sorry for sweating all over the place. I guess that's it. So I'm Carl Galler with Carl Galler Builds, and I am out.